Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Uh, today is going to be pretty similar to the last one. This time we're going to be taking on the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sinc to the fourth of n. So that's sine to the fourth of n over n to the fourth. And we're going to be doing that by converting it into a triple integral. So uh, this, this problem is going to take us a while. It's probably going to be a longer video, but I think it's going to be really interesting and fun. So uh, hang in and watch till the end. Yeah. All right, let's jump right into the problem. So the method we're going to use here is we're going to pretty much repeat the strategy we used for sinc squared of n. So we're going to write sinc to the fourth of n as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine squared of n over n squared times sine squared of n over n squared. And we're just going to take each of these sine squared of n over n squared and convert those into integrals, which we did earlier in the video. So um, we did in my video where I did a sine squared of n over n squared, we're going to do the same thing. So each of those are going to become cosine 1 minus cosine of 2n over n squared, which is the same as um, sine of theta or cosine of theta, sorry, cosine theta evaluated at 0 and at 2n over n squared, which is equal to the integral from 0 to 2n of sine theta d theta over n squared. And we're going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 2 of sine of n and then, I don't know, nx dx over n, uh, just substituting theta equals nx in that situation. And then we'll just have that with two separate variables. So let's go ahead and substitute that into our infinite sum. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two single integrals, oh, I forgot my dx here, and we're going to just uh, move them inside each other and make it into one double integral. And I don't and I guess this is all just over n squared because we have two one over n's. So this is just going to look like the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 2 of sine nx sine ny dx dy all over n squared. So now the trouble is we have that n squared in the bottom and we want to get rid of that. So let's see how we're going to do that. So just taking a look at this uh, integrand right here, or I guess the sum and we should say. One thing we can do uh, that we've done in the past to um, get rid of that n squared in the bottom is to convert it into another integral. But to convert something into an integral, we need to have two separate terms, right? I guess we could do we could do some other things, but we're going to um, split up into two separate terms here. So the way we're going to do that is with the sine product to sum formula. So that's a pretty simple formula, sine A, sine B equals one half cosine A minus B minus cosine A plus B. So we're just going to end up with one half integral from zero to two, integral from zero to two of, cos of cosine um, n x minus y minus cosine n x plus y again all over n uh, dx dy all over n squared. And now I'm going to do a super important step that's going to seem kind of odd but I will definitely explain it later because it's really a confusing step at this point. I'm going to take x minus y and I'm going to throw absolute value bars over this. And this is justified because cosine of um, the absolute value of x is the same as cosine of x because cosine is uh, an even function. So we are allowed to do that. And um, it's going to become really important later on and hopefully you'll see why. Now we're just, we're just going to conv convert this inside part into an integral. So this is the same, this inside part is the same as cosine of, I guess I'll say cosine n theta evaluated, or I'll say nz, I guess, so we can use some nice letters, cosine of nz evaluated at absolute 
value x minus y and x plus y. And this is going to be equal to the integral from, I'll actually flip it so that we can use that negative sign, from absolute value of x minus y to x plus y of the der negative, the derivative of cosine of nz with respect to z. Uh, so we're going to end up with n sine of nz dz. And that's perfectly going to cancel with this n on the bottom right here. And I can just rewrite this in here. And yeah, so that's uh, what our triple integral is going to look like. And of course, we still have that sum on the outside. I just haven't dealt with that yet. Um, so really, we had um, sum from n equals 1 to infinity on the outside here. And I'm just going to bring that sum inside the integral right here. So uh, this 1 over n. And then we're just going to convert this sine of nz to e to the iz and have this imaginary part. And this is going to, or e to the inz, sorry. And e to the inz is same as e to the iz to the n. And so we're just going to have, because uh, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n is equal to negative ln 1 minus x. So this is just going to become negative natural log 1 minus e to the i z. All right. And we're taking the imaginary part of that. And let's go ahead and make some more space in order to evaluate this. All right. So negative natural log of 1 minus e to the i z. This is something super similar to stuff we've seen in the past. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember, we're just um, essentially going to be converting this into tan inverse of cot of something. So remember that the imaginary part of a natural logarithm uh, usually becomes an arctangent term. So we're going to end up having negative inverse tangent of the real part over the imaginary part, or the imaginary part over the real part, sorry. So that's going to be negative sine z over 1 minus cosine z. And then using trig identities, this is the same as negative tan inverse of, or actually positive tan inverse of cot of z over 2. All right. And if you want more details on how that's done, I'll uh, put a card for uh, one of my previous videos where I uh, showed this result. So we're going to have 1 half, the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2 integral x minus y to x plus y of tan inverse of cot of z over 2 dz dx dy. All right. So now we have to deal with this nasty tan inverse of cot of z over 2. Luckily, we've dealt with this function before, and uh, we know that tan inverse of cot of theta is equal to pi over 2 minus theta, as long as theta is between 0 and pi. So we just have to make sure that z is between 0 and pi, because otherwise our definition for tan inverse of cot of theta is very different. So uh, we can see that x and y go from 0 to 2, right? So of course, absolute value of x minus y is always going to be between um, 0 and 2 as well, pretty clearly, and x plus y is going to go all the way up to 4, possibly, right? So that's good for us because that means that z is between 4 and 0, so z over 2 is between 2 and 0, which is less than pi. So that means we can safely plug in this formula for tan inverse of cot of z over 2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And that's actually the reason we needed to use that absolute value, because if we didn't have the absolute value, there would be some regions where uh, y is greater than x, and then theta would not be between 0 and pi, and that would mean that we would have to um, split up the regions in a very difficult way, and it would not be very nice to us. So pi over 2 minus z over 2. So actually, the first time I did this problem, I did not know to throw those absolute value bars in. And I struggled a lot with that integral until I realized I could go back and use that absolute value earlier on. So this integral is relatively simple. Um, 
from the pi over 2 part, we're going to have pi over 2 x plus y minus pi over 2 absolute value of x minus y, right? And from the z over 2, uh, negative z over 2 integrated is going to be z squared over 4. So at x plus y, that's going to be negative x plus y squared over 4 plus absolute value of x minus y squared over 4. And when you have the absolute value squared um, for real numbers, that's just the same as um, the without the absolute value squared. So we can just write that as x minus y squared. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and split up this nasty absolute value part from the rest of the integral here. So the first part of our integral is going to be 1 half integral from 0 to 2, integral from 0 to 2 of pi over 2. I guess I could just write negative pi over 4 out here. Negative pi over 4, uh, integral of x minus y dx dy. And the other part of our integral is going to be integral from 0 to 2, 0 to 2, pi over 2, x plus y, minus, okay, so once we expand out these uh, these right here, we can see that all the squared terms are going to cancel because they're all going to be positive, and all we're going to be left with is the 2xy terms from these, so we're going to have minus 2xy and then minus 2xy again, all over 4, so that's just going to be minus xy, dx, dy. All right, let's go ahead and evaluate these integrals. So first, let's evaluate the easier integral, which is the one without the absolute value. That's the integral from 0 to 2, 0 to 2 of pi over 2. x plus pi over 2 y plus or minus x y. dx dy. So this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to have 1 half integral from 0 to 2. And then first, we're integrating with respect to x. So that's going to be x uh, pi x squared over 4 evaluated at 2 and 0. So we're just going to end up with pi. And then this is just going to become plus pi y. And then again, x squared over 2. So we're going to have minus 2y dy. And so we're going to end up with 1 half times 2 pi plus, I guess, 2 pi as well, and then minus, and then y squared evaluated at 2 and 0 is just going to be 4. So this is going to come out to 2 pi minus 1 half. Uh, sorry, something I just realized is that all the way from the beginning of the problem, when I set uh, sine squared of theta equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, over 2. I actually forgot this 2 right there, and I did that twice, so everything should be divided by a factor of 4. So really we should have 1 eighth here. So sorry about that. Uh, so this is actually going to be pi over 2 minus 1 half. All right, so our other interesting integral here is going to be 1 eighth, or I guess we had pi over 4 and we're dividing by 4 again because of that mistake I made. So we're going to have pi over 16 um, integral from 0 to 2, integral from 0 to 2 of absolute value x minus y dx dy. So the way to deal with an absolute value is pretty simple. Um, since we're only dealing with 2D space, it's not too complicated. Once you get to dealing with absolute value in 3D space, I've uh, discovered that it becomes much more complicated very quickly. So um, all we have to do is split it up into regions where x is greater than y and x is less than y. So we're going to visualize an xy graph here. So the origin, we have 2, 2, this is y, and this is x. Let's draw the line y equals x. So if we imagine we're integrating over this entire area, which we are, everything in this area where uh, is going to be where x is greater than y, because uh, y is less than x, so it's the same thing, right? And so when we're integrating in this area, we'll call this area a. Um, we're just, we're just going to be doing x minus y because instead of having, because uh, the absolute value of x minus y is just going to be x minus y when x is greater than y. And if we look at this area b, 
this is where y is greater than x. So all we have to do now is define these areas a and b uh, in terms of integrals, right? So one really easy way to do this is to kind of just look at the values the variables take on here. So if we look at area A to start, we can see that X takes on the value that Y is, and then it takes on a bunch more values going this way. So for example, when Y is equal to one, right in the middle here, X takes on one as well as every other value up to two. So we could put X on the inside. We know that Y is going from zero to two one way or another, right? we can put x on the inside, we could say x goes from y all the way up to 2. And if we look at the area b, we can see a very similar thing. Instead of x taking up all the values from y all the way up to 2, it takes all the values from 0 all the way up to y. And y still takes up from 0 to 2. So we can really easily rewrite this integral as well. We can write this as the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from y or, or sorry, from zero to y. And now all we have to do is integrate normally. So we're gonna end up with pi over 16, integral from zero to two. Okay, from two to y, first we're gonna have x squared over two. So that's gonna be two minus y squared over two minus two y plus y squared. So we're just going to have positive y squared over 2 dy. Actually, we can combine this with the other integral here because we're going to end up integrating the same thing. So the integral from 0 to y of y dx is just going to be y squared. And the integral from 0 to y of negative x dx is going to be negative y squared over 2. And so these are just going to end up canceling. And we just have this super easy integral. And so this is going to be pi over 16 times 4. Then negative 2y, that's going to be negative y squared. So that's going to be minus 4. And then y squared integrated from 0 to 2. That's going to be 3 over, oh, this is pi over 16. y cubed over 3 evaluated at 0 and 2. So that's just going to be 8 over 3. And this is just going to end up being, if we cancel everything out, pi over 6. So if we go ahead and combine our two answers from earlier, our integral with the absolute value and our integral without the absolute value, we're going to find that our answer is pi over 2 minus 1 half minus pi over 6. Since we are subtracting that absolute value integral, and so overall, we're going to end up with pi over 3 minus 1 half. And that is actually the answer for our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine to the fourth of n over n to the fourth. Absolutely beautiful triple integral that we solved there. And uh, in case you guys can't notice the trend soon enough, once I figure out all the uh, iron out, all the mistakes, I'm going to be doing the integral from, or the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine to the fifth of n over n to the fifth. Absolutely amazing quadruple integral we get to do there. Lots of um, cool integrals in cubes there. So uh, yeah, tune in for that video as well. I think you guys will all enjoy it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and all the strategy, strategies and methods uh, shown. If you have any questions about any of them, feel free to reach out in the comments section, and I'm happy to uh, discuss anything with you. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.